Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to explore the fundamentals of material layer creation in Unreal Engine. Material layers allow you to stack multiple materials on top of each other. This technique is incredibly powerful for creating complex dynamic visuals without the need for multiple separate materials. Today we are going to create a multi-layered procedural skybox material that can work as a perfect example and use case to demonstrate the capabilities of layered materials in Unreal Engine. So let's get started. In my scene, I just have the sky sphere. This is where I'm going to add my layered material and this is all I need for this demonstration. So let's create a new material. So to use layered materials, we need a node called material attribute layers. So if you look into the details panel, it requires an array of layer assets. All our core functionalities are going to be added inside those layer assets and not in this material. The material attribute layer node is expected to be connected to a material attribute pin. So we are going to convert our output material to use material attributes instead. So now let's create our material layer asset from the material section in the context menu. This is where I'm going to create the functionality for our procedural sky. So I will set our main material to be translucent and unlit because I am only going to be interested in applying our shader code to the emissive color channel. I am going to add a noise node over here. These noise nodes provide a powerful way to quickly start building a variety of noise based shaders. There are various types of noise such as Pauline Volley, Simplex, Voronoi, Musgrave, Curl and many more. If you want more control and high level of customizations in your parameters, you will need to build the noise shaders yourself. And that is how I have developed my Procedural Skybox plugin. This plugin utilizes a custom library of advanced noise shaders to create highly customizable and complex Procedural Skybox material. Additionally, it fully leverages layered materials to create truly stunning multi-dimensional skies. This is currently available in the marketplace, so if you're interested, please check it out. The link is given in the description. And I'm currently working on another plugin called Volumetric Space Environment, which will use quite similar concepts to create advanced volume-based cloud and nebula shapes. Creating such noises can be a topic for another tutorial, but for now, we will use these built-in noise nodes. While they're somewhat limited in terms of customizability, they provide an excellent starting point for your noise-based materials. I will connect these to the emissive color. The result is not quite visible because the tiling is too much. So I will just reduce this. Yep, I can already see the cloud shapes appearing. Now we are going to add a few parameters that we can use to customize the noise further. In our main material, we set this layer asset as the default background layer. And remember, these are just the default values I am adding to this array. The whole purpose of having a layer system is the ability to create and add multiple layer assets even from the material instances. And when you combine two layers, you also see this blend asset. This is also a kind of material function where you are defining how exactly you are going to combine these two layers. So you can blend between two layers. You can add, subtract or multiply the two layers. It's totally up to you. However, you want to combine the two layers. Now let's create a new layer blend asset. 
here you can see two function inputs one for the top layer and another for the bottom layer and it's up to you how you want to blend this for example you can add a multiply node and try and multiply the two material attributes you will not be able to directly connect to it because it gives material attributes as the output parameter so i need to call the function get material attributes So instead of blend material attributes, I need to add the set material attributes node over here. And then I will simply add the two emissive colors and connect with this node. Now let's add a few parameters which are respectively responsible for setting the scaling for each of these two layers. and also set the overall scale. All right, so now we can add our blend asset over here. Let me quickly open the layer parameters tab. So here you can see the individual layers as well as the parameters that you are supposed to modify, but you cannot modify them directly over here because these parameters are exposed inside the material instances. Okay, so now let's create a material instance. Here we need to go over to the layer parameters tab. And now you can modify all the individual parameters, including the parameters for both these layers as well as the parameter for the layer blend. We can now add a uniform tiling parameter. We can use this parameter to easily mix and match the different tiling values for different layers. Now let's modify the uniform tiling property as well and see how it looks. Okay, so this is looking perfect so far. We are already getting a satisfactory amount of customizability. Now let's apply this material to our sky sphere. The tiling is too much, I think. So I will just reduce the tiling further. To make the tiling a little convenient, I can just divide the wall position by something like 2000. Now we can play along with the values, reduce the tiling further until and unless we get the shape we are looking for. This already looks like a decent cloud shape. Now let's readjust the parameters to understand what are the possibilities or range of variations that we can hope to get from this minimalistic setup. We are going to add a few more parameters for adjusting the contrast of the noise. Okay, so now I'm going to add another noise note. I will set the noise type to Voronoi and I'm going to combine these two noises. And I will also add a few more additional parameters that are going to be relevant to this particular noise type. This gives me even more flexibility and controls to customize our shader for every material layer. Mm -hmm. 
Now we are going to create a layer instance for our material layer similar to a material instance. A layer instance is used to set the preset values for the parameters defined in the corresponding layer. I will create another material instance where I am going to apply this. We need to now adjust the parameters for the layer instance. Let's apply the material instance now. The updated layer instance is not quite reflected and that is because when you update your layer or layer instance, you also have to click on this apply button. Okay, for sure this is the tiling issue. So I have to still adjust my tiling from my material instance. Now I'm going to duplicate the layer instance and then adjust the settings a bit more to create a different noise. I will add this layer instance now to my material. Alright so now let's play with the values till we get our satisfactory results. You can save your current material instance as child or a sibling. So when you save as siblings, you are in fact duplicating this instance. So in this case, both the material instances will have the exact same parent material. And when you save as child, you are basically creating a child instance of this current material instance. You also see the save child button against each material layer. This will save the current material layer as layer instance and this is also very useful when you want to save this particular layer setting while you keep experimenting with the parameters. Okay, so I am having this slight inconvenience of manually lowering the uniform tiling every single time for every single layer instance. For that I want to implement a global tiling parameter. So normally what you do, you add a function input in any material function that can then be customized via maybe extra parameter in your parent material. But in this case I cannot do that as you can see this error that layer graphs only support a single material attributes input and what I am adding over here is a function input. If I want to add any custom input the only way around is going to be creating a material attributes input only. I want to use the displacement node to set my global tiling parameter. Alright. In my parent material, I will add make material attributes. And then I will add a parameter for setting the global tiling and connect that to the displacement node. Now we can simply adjust the global tiling parameter and the tiling is now affecting all my material layers together. Pretty convenient, right? Okay, so now I want to create another layer blend asset that can help me blend two layers based on some threshold parameters so that one layer can occupy the other layers darker areas. So in here I will add a blend material attributes node and connect the two material layers. In alpha I have added the saturate node of the bottom layer which is going to clamp the noise values between 0 and 1 and I can also adjust the saturation 
by a threshold parameter. Let me add our blend asset over here. So now let's adjust the threshold parameter. So here you can see the second layer occupying the darker areas of the first layer. So this kind of blending is much more useful when compared to simply adding the two layers. All right, so that wraps up our today's tutorial on material layers in Unreal Engine 5. I hope you found this extremely useful and if you have any questions regarding material layers, feel free to leave a comment down below. I will be more than happy to help you out. The assets that I've created for the purpose of this demonstration are also available on my Patreon page. So consider supporting me by becoming a member. And if you're interested in the Procedural Skybox plugin, please check out the Marketplace page. The link is in the description. And finally, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel for more such tutorials like this one. I will see you in the next video.